Well, today on Nation of Window Cleaning Podcast, we're talking all about dealing with customers. How do you do it? The good, the bad, the ugly, the whole thing. So if you're in any type of business, make sure to stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's better than a cat video or most cat videos. There's some good ones out there. Uh, but either way, I hope you get something out of it. Uh, let me tell you about me. I am Jersey with Window Cleaning Resource. Uh, I am a sales rep. That's what I do. I bring content, hopefully helping you learn. Uh, I do everything from putting orders in, but I also want to help in any way I can. But I make my cheddar with sales. So if there's any sales you need me to put in for you, please let me be your uh, rep. You can literally put everything in your cart. Then just shoot me a text and be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. Put it through, man. I click go instead of you. I get credit. It costs you nothing extra other than literally a text to say, what's up, my man? Or whatever more hip thing you'd want to say. Uh, but my number is 862-312-2026. And that is a cell phone, so you can text me. That's how I do all day long. If you want to call, certainly do that. If you got questions... If you got bidding questions, any of that stuff, let me know. I, I do genuinely want to be your rep for everything. So if you haven't yet had me as your rep or allow me to put everything in for you, get your orders done, please do that. Shameless plug. But I'm also the owner of American Window Cleaner Magazine. Right? All these awesome, awesome stickers. So if you haven't yet, we're doing this big push to get to a certain kind of tier by the end of the year. So if you want to do me another solid and you don't yet have a subscription to American Window Cleaner Magazine, just go to awcmag.com. You can pause the podcast, go there, get your subscription, and then come back. Uh, but no, uh, genuinely, it's 12 months. You get a, uh, a new issue every month to your door with a custom window cleaning sticker sheet so you can deck out your buckets. If you've seen any pictures of buckets, and trucks and everything else with the cool stickers. That is American Window Cleaner Magazine. It's been going on since 1986, and yes, it's a real magazine. There's also a PDF, but I hate PDF magazines myself. Hopefully you like the paper ones. Something to read on the bathroom, at least. <laughs> Go to awcmag.com, get your subscription, and uh, that would be absolutely amazing. But all the shameless plugs done for the day Yes, we're talking about customers, and this actually came from uh, Jesse, uh, by the way. If you have suggested suggest, suggestions, if you have suggestions, shoot them to me. Text me, call me. Uh, this one actually came in, I want to say, uh, maybe on Instagram. But anyway, Jesse Infante, uh, he was the one that kind of suggested this, and I took it a little bit. He said he wanted to learn about uh, customer complaints and rude customers a little bit more. And uh, funny that he had brought that up uh, when I recorded this. The day before I recorded this, uh, I was on chat, obviously, with windowcleaner.com. I'm on chat a lot. And I had a, an extremely rude person. We get those like once, maybe not too much, like once every couple of weeks, once a month, just some like entitled a-hole who treats you so terribly for no reason. And, uh, yeah, this guy said that I didn't answer his questions and how much of a piece of garbage I was. We get that. We also get trolls. So I know a thing or two about some of them. And I'm telling you, there are just some customers that just will never, ever be happy with anything ever. They're just people in life. Think about negative energy. No, I'm not that guy. But think about that. Like, think about some people you meet and you're like, oh, gosh, like, everything about this person is like, ugh. Oh my gosh, you just won the lottery. Yeah, but do you know how many taxes I'm going to have to pay? What? You still won the lottery. Like, you know you get to keep most of it, right? Or half of it, or any of it. Anyway, so there's always those people. But today we're talking more about just kind of the customers in general. So I know you guys have customers. I know this may resonate. But if you're on YouTube, go ahead and comment and let me know. Or shoot me a text or whatever. Anyway. But dealing with customers is always going to be the trickiest part of what we do. It just is, right? As a window cleaner or as a business owner, you deal with a lot of customers. 
you have a lot of people that you have to please. Now, the nice thing about that is, if you work for a Fortune 500 company and your job is secure, you have one person. If you have one boss, that one boss could have any situation, downsizing, he, you farted in his office, he doesn't like you, whatever it is, and you lose your entire job. But with us, we have thousands of bosses, right? So there's not really a way to lose your job, but you have to deal with more of that. And the law of averages means you're gonna deal with some really, really amazing people and some really, really, really not amazing people. That's the truth of it is. And I've dealt with a lot of amazing people, but I've also dealt with my share of a-holes, which could stand for whatever you want, because I don't swear on this podcast. But how do you deal with them? Like, what do you do? What do you say? How do you kind of get your message across? How do you stay positive in such a negative situation? Now, I'm going to tell you, there is one big thing that there is not ever a time when somebody is talking about you. And I'm going to put this out there. And this is me always seeing the better in things. And uh, if you've ever met me, I try to be as positive as possible. But you don't know if that person has been pooed on all day, all week. You don't know their situation. Here's the, th the truth of the matter is, you know what a garbage truck is. A garbage truck picks up little things of garbage, bag here, bag there, or beg, if I'm saying it right. They pick up all that, empty cans, right, all day long. But eventually, eventually the last can that gets dumped in fills it to capacity. Can't put any more in there, right? No matter they hit that awesome lever that crushes everything, right? But at a certain point, the last little bit, they have to dump it. They go to the landfill and do their thing, right? But they dump all of their garbage in the landfill. One spot. All of it. All day. One spot. That's people. People could be just having a season. You know that we have it. You know that there's there's times where um, it just feels like you are on your, you know, uh, bad news comes in threes kind of thing. Everything just seems so tough. Everything is just, and eventually you want a break, right? Maybe you don't, which is awesome. But in the same side with customers, you don't know what else happened for everything. So a lot of times people say, if somebody's really, really just in a negative thing or they call you names or they do whatever, that it's you. And people take that really, really personal, but it's not that, especially in business, right? But let's jump in and talk about why customers would be angry, why would they complain, why are they being rude, all that stuff. And the first thing is that you need to meet and set expectations. Every single thing, and if you get anything from this podcast, listen and understand this line. By the way, I'm a nobody. I don't, I am not the guy who knows everything. I'm not that. I'm not a guru. I'm none of those. I just am a guy with a microphone and a, uh, a backdrop, right? Uh, but this is like one of the, the best understandings in business that you can have. And here's the thing. People only complain or have a bad time or a bad service or a bad experience or a bad whatever when their expectations are not met. That is the definition of angry, upset, complaints, all that. And you're like, well, yeah, that kind of makes sense, I guess. But if they have a bad time, they're going to Right. Because they expect their expectations is they're going to be happy after the experience, right? Their expectation is that the windows will be clean. If they're not, they complain, right? Like rightfully so, right? If you go there and you smell, their expectation was they expected you not to smell in their house. They expected you to treat their property right. They expected certain things and it just didn't happen. So if somebody complains, it's because of an expectation. If you go to a job and you do the bid, you give them a price. You go to the job, you tell them what the price is, you give them the uh, invoice, you have all that stuff. No one will complain about the price because they've already said yes. They've already known the price. There's expectation is the price is this. This is what they pay, right? They expect to get X amount of stuff 
for that price. Expectations are what it is. I'll tell you something. This is how you know expectations are how people completely. If you tell them something, if you give them an expectation, all you need to do is meet that expectation. And I'll give you an example. You're a pressure washer, right? How many times have you been to a property where you've gone in and you've done concrete? And when you're done, there's still some staining, some things on there. It doesn't look new because the concrete's 20 years old, right? And you have somebody go, oh, wow, well, I really thought this was going to look better. You know, uh, there's nothing else you can do. There's no It's because in the very beginning, you didn't give them an expectation. They came to you with the expectation. Oh, it's dirty. You'll clean it up. It'll look brand new. You can't bring a 1989 Ford Ranger through a car wash and expect it to look brand new right? That's not expectation. But when somebody brings it to a detail place and they have that same truck and they go in and do the waxing and the, the, and it's still the paint's faded. Still their clear coat's missing and you know there's that dent in the back that's rusting and everything else. They expect that they brought it somewhere is going to look better. But if you tell that same person with the concrete, say, hey, uh, we can definitely do this. It's going to be great. Uh, just to let you know, obviously, the concrete's not new. It won't look new when we're done, but it's going to be definitely brighter, a lot cleaner, and uh, it's going to look uh, night and day from what it is now. If you set the expectations, it will not look new. You know, If there's a big spot of oil that's been in a driveway for 10 years, right? Just so you know, that spot we're going to work on, but it's not going to come clean. There is going to be some shadowing, and you're definitely still going to see it. We're going to be lightened up, but you're still going to see it. When you get done, and they still see it, they go, oh, yeah, yeah, I see what you did, but, uh, yeah, it does look better. Their expectation was that it's still going to be there. If you look at that same stain, you say, hey, uh, yeah, we're going to get that out. It's going to look brand new. This thing is going to be absolutely perfect. They go out there, and of course, there's pits and chips, and the stain's still there. They're gonna be like, "You told me, you told me this was gonna be gone." Oh yeah, sorry, we worked on it, but uh, can't get it out. Yeah, but you told me. My expectation was what you set that it would be clean. Then I complain. It didn't happen to be what I expected. Now, on a side note, which we're not even getting into, an expectation is set. Your job is to go above the expectation. That is building the experience. And that's why people call you back. And that's why you can reschedule. And that's why people are hiring you for the experience to go above and beyond what they expect. But anyway, set an expectation of what you want. And that expectation is going to be what you live and die by. People will not complain if your expectations were met, right? If they expect that your job, that you're doing what you're doing, Right? They expect it to take 12 hours because they have a mansion, but it takes you an hour because they don't. They then figure they paid you too much. You've gotten that or you've heard it. People are like, oh, man, I, are you sure? I, I mean, I'm paying you like $200 an hour. Like, you know, it took you no time. Mm-hmm. I said, as soon as I get my magic wand out of the shop, it'll be even faster. Right? Their expectation that they set was that it was going to take you so long because they have this giant mansion. But in your world, you're like, yeah, I do this eight hours a day every day. This is, this is nothing. It's going to go quick. The reason they complain or tell you you made too much money isn't the fact that you made too much money. They knew that going into it. They knew the price. You gave them the price. They said yes. They knew all that. The expectation was how long you were working for that price. The only time they get the complaint is because of that. If at the very beginning thing, you said, hey, just so you know, uh, price is going to be uh, $2.99 for everything, and we should be done in about an hour and a half. If you said that, and I'm not saying you have to give them all the expectations, but if you would have said that to the same person at the very beginning, when you were done then in about an hour and a half, they would have been like, okay, cool. They knew that the expectation wasn't 12 hours. It was an hour and a half. No one can complain when they already know what it is, right? No one complains that a Lamborghini costs too much, right? They know how much it costs if they look anywhere about the price. 
The same thing is you will always give a price before you do work for someone. They're not complaining about the price. If the whole thing is done and they figured for this amount of money, you were going to do X, Y, and Z and you didn't do X, Y, and Z, they'll complain that they paid you too much because you didn't even do X, Y, Z. Look at the complaints sometimes. Look at if you ever have them or anybody does get one. Even online, somebody says, hey, I got this complaint. Look at it. Just read it once and understand it's an expectation wasn't met. You get to set the expectations, which is really, really, really an interesting thing when you start to get to it, right? Understand what a customer wants, build the expectations to what they want. People want clean windows and a lot of window cleaners because we're the ones that do the cleaning. We're like, you got to do great work. You got to do the best. You got to, no, you can't do crap work, but you don't have to do the best work in the industry. No one cares and no one sees. No one sees. Let me ask you this, between Ford and Chevy, Silverado and the F-150, which one has the closer tolerances? You could probably guess. Let's talk about axles. Let's talk about, you know, the the camshaft. Which one's got closer tolerances? No one knows. No, no, No one normally, some of you might, but no one normally would care, right? Who's got the closer tolerance in the uh, stereo, right? Where the stereo sits into the dashboard. No, but they're not focusing on that because that's not something that anybody would care about, right? It's just simple, simple such. Another thing, I'm going to tell you. If you don't think it's the experience that sells, do you think that for any second that the adhesive that holds the carpet in or the, um, um, you know, any type of uh, material in a car, that new car smell, that's glue. You know that, right? Like the smell that you're smelling is like new stuff. That's usually the glue and adhesives. There's a very, very real possibility that in 2022, they could make something that does not smell. They could make something that smells way less and doesn't linger that long. This is old school stuff, right? When they didn't have the technology back in the 50s when the new car smell was there. New car smell still exists for the experience. Think about that. If people didn't like that smell of new cars, it would be gone. But because people do, and they expect a car to smell like that, it smells like that. Ever think of that? So understand what people want. Create the experience because the experience is what goes above and beyond. The expectations are what they expect to happen. If you go to a haircut place and they give you a haircut and your hair is cut to how you want it, you walk out and go, cool, yeah, I got a good haircut. That's it. They met your expectations. You expected to get a haircut, look a certain way. They did that. You left and went, oh, yep, I like it. But if during that time you had a great conversation, right? Maybe they went above and beyond and said, hey, let me do this. Or here's the thing I think you should do. Or here's what I could help. Or here's what I, if they went above and beyond you expecting just to get a haircut, now you tell other people about it. Oh, this place is awesome. No one says, oh, this place cut all of my hair better, you know, more like if I get this haircut at two different places, the exact same thing, it cuts it out. It's like cleaning windows. They're both clean. You're not, you're not selling or creating an experience any of that. It's everything else. Create the experience. An experience for somebody helps them overlook the fact that they weren't maybe, um, they didn't get their expectations, right? So here's, here's a thing that we talked about. Uh, I do a live with Steve on the window cleaner. Um, and, uh, we did a live and somebody had asked that about, um, about, uh, clean and things like that. And I have not in the last probably two years of my company before I sold, did I have a complaint? I can't even remember years. And it's not that every time was absolutely perfect. It was our experience was so good that you'd have one where some lady would be, oh yeah, just, you know, hey, on that window too, just double check it. Cause last time you guys were here is kind of a big spot in the middle. I just, I just went out and buffed it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We would get that every now and then. I mean, we're still doing something. You just, things are going to get missed and whatever else. But our experience 
was so good, they lowered their, you know, and I, I expected that to be perfect, but you know, they, he must have just missed it. Don't, I'm not going to call those guys back. Oh, they're so busy. You know, so we've created an experience so that they can drop their expectations. If you create a great experience, it creates an overall awesomeness. If you go in and you just do not create a good experience and you're just a, a slug, no one wants to talk to you, you smelled, you didn't even take your shoes off, and you left the same streak, not only are they going to call you because their expectations weren't met, their expectations weren't met already on who you were and how you treated their property. So they already got that bottled up. But now they're doing reviews all over the place. They're telling everybody. They're telling you how worse company ever. All for the same smear that the other people did that not only didn't write, write you a bad review, but they also love you. Have you back a billion times. Tell their friends how awesome you are. If you like someone, you don't go and tell them your flaw. Oh, hey, this is my wife. Yeah, she uh, she farts in her sleep. Whatever. That's not my wife. But whatever yours does, right? You don't do that. You don't put out their front things. You put out the positive things because you really like them. Same thing with companies, right? Set expectations and meet those expectations. Create an experience and beat that experience. Their expectations of an experience beat that. Okay, so all that's done. You've talked about all that, but now you're dealing with a complaint. Somebody did complain. Evaluate the customer on who they are and what they're really getting at. Is it a person who just complains about everything? There are a lot of valid complaints out there. We get something where I'm going to go into sales and uh, what we do. As soon as you call me, which I hope you do, shameless plug number two, um, you go in and we put the sale, we put the order in, right? You ordered a box of towels and a, a jug of chemical, right? We send that out and like baboons, FedEx decides to either lose the package or destroy the package or the package breaks and you're missing stuff. And we packaged it awesomely. They're going to destroy it anyway. I mean, literally, we, we spend... Every time we send like a Zero Peer Revolution or Revolution Max, I mean, the packaging in that is literally like $50 worth of packaging. It's a ton we put into that. Foam and custom every box, like just a ton of stuff. And yet still, FedEx drops boxes and bends the crap out of things, you know, breaks a wheel, does whatever. Obviously, we handle that every day. We do thousands of orders. So, I mean, obviously, you're, we run into that a lot. Um, not as, not a lot. Don't get scared, but you know, right? So we're going to handle that. We're going to get you out everything perfect. The expectation is you were going to get something that was perfect, right? Now your expectation wasn't meant, but you've never talked to FedEx because they're kind of the, the quiet one, right? You're not, maybe you'll call FedEx, but more than likely you're going to call us and go, Hey, this thing that I expected to come here as brand new wasn't brand new. I understand where they're coming from. That sucks. Super sucks. It's not my problem as far as like, I didn't do it. It's not my problem. It's a FedEx problem. But I'm going to handle that problem because we're going to send out the new stuff. Don't even worry about FedEx. We'll take care of all that. We have to go and write this report and everything else, uh, any type of damage that we get reimbursed for, right? They don't just pay you. It's like a whole process. But you don't ever see that. We take care of that if it happens, right? So I understand their expectations weren't met. I understand the customer, and it's also not my problem, but I'm the one that's going to help them. Bridie in the office, if you've not talked to her yet, she's going to help them. The expectation is that they have something new. The over-expectation is how far we go out to apologize, help them any way we can, and get stuff out ASAP. Don't worry. We'll take care of everything with FedEx. We're going to send you the new parts to fix this right now. Right? understand the complaint and where they're coming from and you can understand the customer evaluate the customer there's always people and i've had them multiple times i have guys that troll me now on text don't do that if, if you think it's going to be funny because it's annoying but people it will be you know uh last night this guy it was uh 10 30 at night something like that 
And uh, this guy came on and was asking about price matching, and I was explaining uh, a situation that we have with uh, CWC. And without anything, he goes into this thing about how pizza garbage I am and I'm not helping him and everything else. Out of nowhere, you know, all you could have said is like, oh, like my question I had was multiple questions. You didn't answer the one question specifically. Uh, just to verify, was this the answer? Or was this the answer? But instead, you go into personal attacks, and it's cool. Like, this is what we do. He goes in and thumbs down all of our chats, and of course, you know, it's a big report on our end. But that customer, for what he did, didn't even have an expectation. An expectation wasn't even set. That guy could have just had his last bucket of garbage put on him. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. Things are slow. Things are this. Things are that. You have to evaluate the customer and evaluate the complaint. If the complaint is real, do what you can. If the complaint is not real, appease the customer. This particular guy uh, decided to jump off and then just keep jumping back on and down rating or whatever. So he was not going to be appealed by anything in that school. Like some customers just are like that. Uh, I had a guy one time who, uh, it was a Sunday. I was on vacation with my family, actually. I work on vacations because I'm stupid. But uh, this guy called, and he's screaming at me, calling me, uh, you know, an effing uh, pissant and everything else, and said that I'm sitting there on my couch selling stuff out of my dad's storage unit. Like, that was his, like, comeback. It was just great. Uh, but that person, it was a Sunday. No one ever, you called Sunday at 8.30 at night, would you expect to resend something that exact day? He needed something to be sent out. We don't ship on Sunday. Uh, no shippers uh, take packages. I'm not talking Amazon, right? Amazon doesn't have a five day a week, right? None of that. But he was so unreasonable that it was the person, not the complaint. And with all that being said, there is something that comes with that. It's called firing a customer. I've done whole episodes on that. You can go back and watch. But unfortunately, you're a flowing stream. This is deep and stupid all at the same time. You're a flowing stream. You know that there are seasons in your life that you flow so perfectly. All of a sudden you're like, man, everything has gone great for the past month. Perfect. Well, guess what? Eventually a storm comes and puts sticks and rocks and everything else in your stream. And what happens? It hinders your flow. Right? All of the water is now trying to go up and around the stick that's in your flow. It's trying to find all these things of how I can fix this stick and the stick is still there. No matter what the stick is, I still have to get the water above it because I need to keep continue to flow. Right? All water leads to the ocean. That's what they say. I got to get there. That's It's always flowing. You're not stopping the flow. You're stopping the flow, you get stagnant. Like you're just not you not doing that. You're getting around, you're figuring out something to happen cuz even if you continue to flow up and over that, it will breach that stick. But the stick is always there. If you want to continue that flow that you had perfect flow, just remove the stick. If the stick is what's changing your flow, remove the stick. It's simple. Not easy, but simple. The same thing with a customer. If you have a customer that sucks, and we've had this in all aspects of our life, right? Maybe you had an employee like this. Maybe you had a customer like this. Maybe you had a toxic family member or whatever. It sucks to make the change, but the result is amazing, right? Sometimes you have to fire a customer, and it is just as simple as letting someone know you know what? I, I do apologize for everything. I, I understand you're just completely not happy and I apologize we created that for you. I'm going to give you a full refund. I don't want you to pay for anything because you're not satisfied. And I also just don't think that we're going to be a really good match going forward. I genuinely appreciate everything and I apologize. We just couldn't get there for you. That person could still be mad because they're still trying to dump that garbage, right? They got a whole dump truck they got to dump. But... You now don't have to deal with a person who's completely not going to be happy. Now, if there's a normal complaint, you're not firing customers. Somebody says, hey, there's a smudge. Like, could you guys come back and do that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm so sorry that happened. Like, let's take care of it. But the people who are completely 
non-pleasable. They've done this for everything. They've tried to scam every contractor they've ever dealt with. Every contractor they've either tried to sue or get money back or after the fact they've complained so that you have to do another. I've had people like that and I know you have too. Where you do an entire job, it's awesome, you've got a great experience, they still call you and go, hey, yeah, it's not good, I just need you guys to redo this. And you get there and you're like, everything's perfect, what is he talking about? And the things they're showing you is like, what? You're just making stuff up. And those are the people who think if they have you do more work, they get more money and more value out of what they paid you. There are people like that. There's also people who will, no matter what, be unhappy. Hey, you know what? You had to come back. Uh, I don't think I should pay full price. We did. We Not only did we clean it the first time perfectly, we came back, went over the issues that you said were there, which weren't. We then spent another you know, 50% of that time to add, and now you want money back. They're just not, you know, not happy. They still write you a complaint. They still do whatever. There are certain people, it doesn't happen often, that you then have to cut. Remember, you're a stream, you have to flow. If they're completely unreasonable and there's nothing that you can do and it's not real complaints, it's time to kind of move on from the customer. So anyway, there you go. I'm off my high horse. I hope that helps. I hope dealing with customers is pretty awesome. Uh, if you want, I have a few things to talk about. If you're still here, listen. If you have any ideas for podcasts, please send them along. I'd love to give you uh, my take on stuff. I'm always looking for content, of course. If you want to be more awesomer than you are now, which is pretty hard because you're pretty awesome, I want to be a rep. Just let me put your orders in. There's two things you can do to allow me to get like a virtual high five from you guys. And it is... Let me put your orders in first and foremost and getting a subscription to AWC, the American Window Cleaner Magazine. Not only is it awesome for you and you get a bunch of stuff, including window cleaning posters and other things you didn't even think existed, but I get more subscribers. So please go do that. Check it out. If you haven't yet to, uh, go to my YouTube, uh, Jersey WCR Nation, or just search WCR Nation. YouTube is starting to do more videos. There's a ton of new edits, and the high rise edit will be live. So, if you want to watch us jump off a building, Steve and I go and check that out. But other than that, until next week, go out there and deal with some customers, but more importantly, be epic.